I do not like seeing applications where you have a category, subcategory, and symptom displayed to the end user that is really more geared for reporting and routing by you as technicians. As an end user, if my email's not working, don't ask me if it's a hardware issue, a software issue, or a network issue because I am none the wiser. And I'm going to pick the first one in the list and it's going to throw off the routing. It's going to make things go the wrong way. It's going to delay the time it takes you to help your end user, and that's the last thing you want of a self-service portal. Um, now, you can take even a simpler approach and just show them a description, right? HR said, you know what, we're not even going to give them a categorization. We're just going to have the end user fill out a short description and a, and a big description and move on. And that's fine too, guys. Um, the, the point here, oops, I meant to go back to this one. The, the point here is that you can make them whatever you want. Each group gets to define what that experience is, and you can make the, the drop down to the dependencies um, as simple or as lengthy as you like, but I would say in no means is it something complicated. The other thing I like to talk about is, well, let me make this the right option here, uh, with my machine, specifically with my monitor, and the problem is it's broken. Does this affect just you? And again, these are just my best practices, my ideas, what I've seen work, uh, working with multiple customers in the past. Uh, if it affects just me, guess what? That's a low-impact ticket. If it affects everyone, that's a high-impact ticket. Are you capable of performing your job? No. That is high urgency. Yes, that is low urgency, or some middle ground that is medium. And when you look at the idle framework and you take the best practices, your impact as well as your urgency – uh, through a matrix, yield a priority, and that's exactly what I'm trying to derive here, but I'm doing so in a, in a language that the end user understands. If you throw a priority up there, field up there for the end user and say, is your issue critical, they're going to tell you yes. So that's the last thing I would recommend that you do. Of course, from an incident, I can uh, search the knowledge base from here, and I can choose which of these uh, data points to pass to the knowledge article, to invoke and, and, and minimize the time it takes me to search. I also can, of course, provide additional information. We do have the ability to still allow for attachments, keeping in mind that they can still copy and paste. We also have and support the idea of templates for the purpose of incident management, not so much service request. And the value here then, of course, is that you're automating how an end user fills in these things based on the, the most common reasons an end user might might submit tickets. And there it is, monitor broke in the request status and I can monitor it from here. So that's the end user portal, um, very fully featured, um, very functional, very easy to use in my opinion. <clears throat> Before I, I leave it though, I do want to talk about the chat feature. Footprints version 12 in in introduced a mobile uh, that has been rewritten and brand new. And if I log in here to my mobile emulator, which simulates a mobile device as my technician, it's going to put me into the chat queue. And if you choose to leverage the chat feature, it gives the end user the ability to see when a technician is available, when they're logged in. There I am. I just popped up for the end user. Over here I'm logged in as Abe. And if I wanted to ask Abe a quick question... That would be show up on my mobile device. I get a push notification like I would on a mobile, and from my mobile, then I can respond. Uh, you know, you probably already have an instant messenger or a chat within your organization, so uh, I don't know that you would re utilize this feature or function. The value I think that it brings is the integration with the mobile that we have, because it's a very, very quick and easy way for the end user and technician to communicate. You know, maybe that the, the the technician gets stopped on his way down the hall. Uh, try this, and the end user says, hey, man, how do I do this? Well, I can pull up my mobile as a technician, start a chat with him, type it in, hit send, and it's waiting for him on his desk when he gets there. Uh, you know, I could also open up a ticket if I wanted to directly from here and put his name on it and put the answer in it. Um, just the idea that the mobile interface is making everybody a little more apt to putting in those tickets that otherwise don't get recorded, which ultimately don't do your organization any favors because you're missing the fact that you're busier than you are. Um, so that's, that's the, the chat integration there. The mobile interface 
allows you to indicate which templates will be used for mobile, which searches will be used for mobile, and also it's fully featured. It's not some stripped down version of the form. And if I click add here, you can see all the different workspaces and the different ticket types that this guy has the ability to submit. I'm going to choose to submit an incident. And you notice the screen moved from right to left. It's simulating a mobile device. In fact, as I fill this out, I can see there's six screens. I, can, I swipe with my thumb. So watch. There is my description. There's the resolution. Here's my time tracking, and I can click the button here to allocate time. Here's how I would look up individuals in my Active Directory and add them to the ticket. I can integrate and schedule an appointment directly from here as well. Now, for those familiar with Footprints, we've always had a calendar integration. Uh, we now bypass the Outlook or Lotus client directly and hit your Exchange Web Services uh, in particular um, through a URL. You no longer have a client or have to manage that at the technician level. It's all done through URLs and, and centrally administered. Uh, what this allows us to do, for those that are not familiar, is consume all the free busy data from all your technicians and bring that into a centralized service desk calendar so I can manage availability of individuals as I assign them out. It also allows when I click on new appointment, whether I do so from a mobile or a desktop, to push a calendar uh, item directly to a technician on their Outlook without them having to reply or OK. So there is um, some nice functionality there. Let me back out of now the mobile interface. Let me log out. I will take off the mobile indicator, which is how I cheated and let it know that I was on a mobile device. And I'll flip over to the full-blown desktop interface. So again, we have a different portal as you can see, it's branded different, the colors are different, the theme is different. I have additional buttons here above, Incident, HR, and Facilities. I now am dealing with incidents, problems, and changes. You'll notice also a new phone button here. As I mentioned to you, everything is an object. Whether it's an item in your CMDB, whether it's a, a user in your vendor uh, contact list, whether it's a, a PO, anything. And to that point, if I am somebody in telecom that deals with phones day in and day out, I might want a new phone button there because nine times out of ten, I got to put a phone into inventory. I click new phone, and it's a direct link into the CMDB, the new phone form, and now here it is. I don't have to go anywhere else or uh, navigate anywhere else. It is instantly available because that's something I do very, very often. So that's a great feature, being able to choose which items are available to you. Now, for those that you don't have a hot button for, you can always just go to the new actions menu and you can see all the items uh, or at least the tickets themselves that I can choose to initiate. Uh, these charts along the right hand side are a single interface for reporting and what I mean by that is again for those familiar with prior versions of footprints you had your home page dashboards that you could configure through preferences. You had the flashboards for both the workspace as well as the technician that you could define through the flashboard configuration screens. You had your metrics based reports and you had your custom reports. You also had your executive dashboard. So literally there were five different places to go to generate graphs, charts, and data. The problem with that is you're relying on the different areas to run the same calculations and often it could lead to uh, confusion as to why one looked one way and why one looked another and what's getting taken into account, etc. Version 12 has service and analytics engine that sits on top of footprints and the service analytics engine stores all the report types, be them canned metrics based reports like activity, average age, transition, turnaround time, statuses from one status to the next, or the custom. And when I create a report, like a custom report, and I place a graph or a chart on that custom report, I can choose at that time whether I want that chart to be available on the home page of Footprints. 
So everything is shared. That's a very con- a big and important theme I want you to take away here is that you no longer have to go to multiple locations to define graphs. You no longer have to go to multiple locations to define, say, search criteria. When you define search criteria, I can use that to define a report, or I can use that to display a list of tickets in a grid. All right. When I define a template, that template can be initiated through an incident, through the service catalog, or through a business rule. I don't have to create three separate templates. Um, these are things you would expect of an application, but unfortunately, again, for those familiar with version 11, often there was uh, some redundancy and some duplication of effort uh, because the products had been around for so long. Different features were added over time. Thus, the administration capabilities were not consistent and, and they were different. Version 12, being a, a new breed uh, from the ground-up architecture, has that consistency that everyone's been looking for. Um, the other nice thing is if you don't have a, a breakdown or a, a, a grid graph view of the tickets that you're looking for, and you see here I can break it down into different tabs. I can say IT service management versus HR versus facilities. I could have them all on one screen or not. doesn't matter to me. Uh, but we can also just say view, and I can go into the service desk, and I can say all the incidents. Or I can go into HR, and I can say, you know what, show me all the new hires. And if we sort on created on here really quick, here's that new hire ticket I created a moment ago for, uh, who was it? Was it Jerry? Where's Jerry's ticket here? Hmm. Maybe I didn't click save. Maybe I did. Interesting. Well, we won't dwell on that. I can come back to that if I need to. Um, but let's go ahead and look at all incidents and there is the monitor broke right so we can see the monitors broken if I wanted to open up this incident I can do so by clicking the link or we also get now have a preview pane makes it easier to look at the information that you're you're collecting again single interface I can scroll and or I can navigate through here. I mentioned service levels. You can see that there's three of them. I'm a VIP, so I had a, a, a higher response time than normal, and my resolution time is here. What's nice about this is you can see which targets you're meeting and which targets you're not on a single screen for any given incident. Another nice feature is the calendar integration. So if I want to schedule a follow-up with this individual for tomorrow at, say, 1 a.m., you know, that's a little awkward, Let's do 2 p.m. I can say create this appointment. It brings up my calendar. I can say your desk. I could link an item if I wanted to. It will link for me. I can say um, going to bring you a new monitor. I can email the end user. Myself being the technician is automatically going to get a calendar appointment in my calendar as a result of the integration. And the appointment itself is right here and can be viewed by my managers to see how many different appointments or times I've visited that person or maybe they miss appointments so you have a record of that tied to any given ticket. 